<laughs> my little my little pet spitter. Hello, buddy. How's it going? You're about to be the intro to the video. <laughs> that door is stuck. Uh, Hell, that scared the sh out of me. <laughs> so, we've been grinding achievements for a little while on this channel now, and I've had a couple of comments suggesting that I play notoriously bad games to see how the grinds differ, if at all. I thought this was a fantastic idea. Now, I spent a little bit of time thinking, what could that game be? Duke Nukem Forever? Not bad. Ride to Hell Retribution? Maybe. But for me, the obvious choice was today's grind. Aliens Colonial Marines. Now, I've never played it before, but I knew all about it since it quickly became one of the most hated games, well, ever. If the review scores are anything to go by. So today we're going to delve into Aliens Colonial Marines to grind all 60 achievements and to ask if it's as bad as the world has made it out to be. And for this grind we do have to do a lot, from the campaign to challenges and even reviving the dead online lobbies, all in the name of those precious achievements. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and trek into one of the worst games ever made. Welcome to the achievement grind. So weirdly enough to begin with, we already have our first achievements. Now before you head into the campaign, you have the option to customise your class for both the Marine and the Xenomorph side. So curious, I went in to see what sort of Xeno appearances I could alter, and by altering the skin and the head of a single Xeno, we unlocked Adaptive Morphology. Not bad, but we're not done yet. Next we alter the Xeno's loadout and by doing so unlock Structural Perfection. Then when we alter the Marine's loadout, we get our third achievement, Ready to Fry Half a City. Now there is an achievement for editing every slot in the Marine's appearance, but we have to unlock a lot first, and it's actually going to be one of the final achievements that we get in the game, which I did think was odd, but anyway, onto the campaign, which for context and achievements, I will be playing on the hardest difficulty, Ultimate Badass. Now the game begins with a distress call. A battalion of colonial Marines travels to help after receiving Hicks's message many weeks prior. Captain Cruz gives his new recruits and us, the audience, a quick summary of what's going on as they want to find out exactly what happened here on the SS Salako. We then take control of our special little soldier and start on our journey, heading straight across a bridge onto the ship. We walk into a room and accidentally grenade launch some of the poor people fighting for their lives. One of the helping hands is O'Neill, and he quickly becomes our buddy, and we're also introduced here to the motion tracker, and when we use it, it seems that we are not alone. Walking through further, we see signs of foul play as milky android boys are scattered around a loading bay, and the further we investigate, the more we see chaos and destruction, and eventually, xeno tendrils that have infected and started to grow on the ship. Soon after, we find the typical signs of xenomorph activity. We've got hatched eggs, we've got trapped soldiers hung up in goo, and a xenomorph itself. It kicks us away trying to defend its well earned human, but we can't be having that so we go to kill our fair Xeno of the game. Now it does pounce on me bonds, which I don't care for, but it thankfully goes down after that and we can go back to freeing our friend. Cruz tells us to get back to the ship but Keys, the man just moments away from death, decides to carry on to get the flight recorder. The game then starts properly with the Xenos as we enter the next room, we are ambushed by a collection of them. Now here is where we got our first taste of the gunplay and the difficulty in which we would need to complete it. Honestly, I didn't mind either. Now granted a couple of hits would kill us, but the Xenomorphs, that's just lore accurate. And they're also pretty fun to shoot. We also got our next achievement here is when we panicked and hit a lurker Xeno mid jump, we unlocked no offence. So far so good, as long as I don't do anything embarrassing next. Okay, well, maybe anything embarrassing after that. So we just carried on and managed to get the flight recording. Time to head back to the ship. Now, also, we have our next few achievements here as well. The next was for simply making it to level 2 as a marine, unlocking us field promotion. The one after that was eat this for shooting a Xeno with a shotgun at a very close range, immediately followed by coming out of the walls for killing a Xeno whilst it's on the roof or the walls. Not bad for 30 seconds work, eh? Anyway, we make it to the rest of the group and the moron that we saved blows up the ship with a grenade because the Xeno stole his brain cells. The explosion of said ship also has sealed the door, so we need to defend the spot for a moment while somebody else hacks the door open. Now it does take a couple of attempts because as I said the aliens can shred through you quite quickly and there are a bunch here, but thankfully there being a lot of aliens here actually got us our next achievement as well, as when we kill 10 aliens that are using the vents we unlock entry prohibited. Honestly the rate in which we were getting these achievements was wonderfully shocking to me, but we get over it, persevere and make it through the door eventually. Heading back to the ship now, Keys then decides now is the time. Time for his chest burster to hatch that the alien gave him, and he gives no warning of his intentions as he just pops a grenade and blows the bridge apart, destroying it and sending another buddy straight to his death. Incredible. 
But since we're not some nameless NPC, but indeed the main character full to the brim with plot armor, we pull ourselves through the bridge collapse and get back to safety. We and O'Neill then find a room which explains what's happened a little bit more. Wayland Yutani PMCs are essentially mechs for hire that are now in command of the ship, and have been breeding xenomorphs to study, which, I, I mean, I don't even have to explain how stupid that is, but they paid the price. We've also seen enough, time to head out. Or we would, however, somebody called Bella comes across the intercom to say that she needs help as she is alone and a Xeno bone spider has just been invading her face, which is always a good sign that she's going to die. But we need to go and get her as O'Neill and Bella apparently have been smashing pasties previously, so it's a love thing. We fight through more alien rooms until we find a brief moment of peace and a couple more talking points, as this is when we're introduced to our first kind of collectible, the audio logs, and we can find several scattered throughout the levels that we'll need to collect and play. Now, on collectibles, there are also a couple more types. The next are dog tags, which again, as expected, are just scattered throughout the levels, and we have to pick them all up for a achievement, but there are also special weapons. There are only six in the entire game, but essentially they are unique or boosted versions of basic weapons that are named after the characters from the films. So we're going to be keeping our eyes open for all of these, and thankfully there isn't actually too many. And moments later we found our first dog tags and picked them up, importantly unlocking our next achievement, Ura to Ashes. And thanks to a level up that we got by doing that as well, we unlocked a token to upgrade one of our guns. When we modified our shotgun, we also completed our first challenge, unlocking us yet another achievement, another bug. Hunt. Now again, you'll need a bit of context here. In the game, there are three categories of challenges. The marine challenges, the campaign challenges, and the multiplayer. And for another achievement, we need to complete every single category of challenges. Now we do try to do as many of them as possible, but we'll talk about this more when we get to the multiplayer section of the grind. Just so you know though, that throughout everything that I'm showing you, we're also grinding various challenges as well, and I just simply can't include them all. Now that was a lot of explaining, so let's unlock an achievement for our troubles. Moments after this, we found the first of the six legendary guns of the game. And and by picking up Hicks's shotgun, we unlocked personal friend of mine. Now it's time to end our first mission. We battle on through with O'Neill Moore and soon make it to a safe room in the cargo bay, where we also flush the pursuing Xenos out for a nice breath of fresh space. But as we do, Reed the pilot comes to pick us up and we unlock the achievement another day in the core for completing the level. Now straight into the next, we are then ambushed by mechs that we found out about in the last level. Now they're not that difficult to take out honestly, but they also can shred your health quite the same as Xenos, so we start fighting our way through here to get to another part of the ship. Once we get through another door, we find a new infested section of the ship. However, this one is freakier, as it has a lot more eggs and some of them aren't even hatched yet. We know this as when we turn around a corner, one opens and a face hugger tries to get us pregnant. Instead, we throw it away and unlock the next achievement, Love at First Sight. Lovely. Honestly, the facehuggers aren't anything special in this game, and I feel like you have to go out of your way to get killed by one of these. But whilst carrying on our mission, we also come across a little easter egg. As by flipping this switch, we opened a door. Once we walk inside, we see the cutest little easter eggs that I've ever seen. And I mean that literally, as by finding these, we unlock another achievement, easter egg. Ah, see? Colonial Marines at least has a touch of humour. However, enough of the pleasantries. We soon find Bella. She's walking and active and saying that she's absolutely fine, although we know that's not going to be the case for long. Our new team of three fight through the rest of the ship. Now, there's nothing really to say here, is it's just rooms and rooms of mechs that we expertly take out, also getting our next achievement in the process by using the motion tracker to detect 100 enemies, unlocking us micro changes in the air density. We eventually reach the room that we're meant to. When we get there, it turns out that the mechs have attacked the Sephora using the Salako's weapons, and both ships are destroyed after the Sephora fires back, which, for those of you who don't know, essentially means big explosion, big success. Now, it's time to quickly regroup with Reed and the rest of the crew to head onto the planet below and hopefully not die in any explosions. So we race there. Now, nothing really of note here happens again, aside of our next achievement, of course, as when we fight our way through, we end two at once. For using a grenade to explode two enemies at once, we unlock Adios Muchachos, and for rescuing a teammate during a close encounter, we get but no cigar. And honestly, I was feeling like we was making really good progress, and the game itself, I actually wasn't too offended with what I was playing so far. A lot of the issues I've heard about this game were to do with game-breaking bugs and horrific horrendous AI that can trap you, fall through the floor and god knows what else, but I didn't experience any of this. So far, it was just a mindless run and gun kind of deal. Now, I'm not going to lie, the voice acting is absolutely terrible, and if I notice bad voice acting, that means it must be really bad, because normally I just don't register that kind of stuff. And it is also worth noting that this game looks and feels like a PS2 game, which sucks considering that this game came out the same year that The Last of Us did, and they look like they're made in totally different decades. But other than that, dare I say, I was almost having fun just shooting shite and blowing things up, so we'll just have to see where it goes. So we eventually find Reed and the rest of the group who are pinned down and need our help, not only with the nasty pasty mech bastards, but the cargo bay door is closed and we need to open it to escape. 
Now this did take a couple of tries as lucky shots meant that I'd be gunned down in a second and have to do this decently lengthy sequence again. However, I soon got it after maybe 20 minutes of trying, we opened the doors and made it to the ship unlocking two more achievements. The first is bad feeling about this drop for finishing the level and fire drill for opening the doors and escaping in under two and a half minutes. However, as we escape the ship of course takes damage and instead of landing safely on the planet we crash into it. We then wake up after the crash. Miraculously, everybody's alive. However, we join to Bishop telling Bella that, yeah, you're gonna die pretty soon. Once we have the three seconds it then takes to get over this information, we then head to a place called Hadley's Hope to see if there's anything there that can help our situation. After Bella gives me some bombastic side eye, of course, Jesus. Fortunately, Hadley's Hope is only an actual minute away, so we head on inside. The plan for now is just to get everything safe and secure. The first step is to plant motion sensors around the area. Once we plant them, the aliens come out to play. We smite them down like the mighty smiter we are until Cruz says that we need to grab a sentry turret for extra protection. So we pick it up and plant it down. Doing this also unlocks us yet another achievement, need a deck of cards. After another wave of aliens attack, we lose signal to Bella and Reed, so we now need to go and save them, taking with us a beautiful new smart gun to carve our way through the Xenos. Now admittedly, this gun kicks ass, you don't even have to aim, just shoot and the gun will do the rest, which is handy when we're swarmed by an army of Xenos next. They don't really do anything though, as we just kill them too quickly, and unlock another achievement for killing 10 Xenos with the smart gun unlocking us Let's Rock. Unfortunately for us though, as we make our way through the rest of the level, at the end we get jumped by a new alien type and we're captured. When we wake up, we have no items, no weapons, and we have to crawl our way to safety, encountering another new alien type, the Boilers. These aliens are totally blind, but one wrong move or sound, and you're toast. Now, honestly, this section was quite a nice change of pace, but it was also very easy to get through. But going through it, we get our next achievement as well for spying the doll head of Newt's toy. We pass by it and unlock mostly come at night. When we reach the end of this section as we're opening a door, the massive alien that captured us returns, and we have to swap our stealthy and calm demeanor to panicked and speedy as we we sprint away from it. We do just that and find O'Neill waiting for us to return to the group. Heading outside we then find Bella once again hiding in a shipping container, but since she got separated we'll have to find Reed as well. Again, doesn't take very long, she's only a moment away and we save her like the hero we are. Now trying to run back to Cruz and Bishop, the chonky alien returns once again to give us some pain, so it's time to fight her instead of running. We hop into a power loader and say get away from her you bitch, before we just absolutely ruin this alien by tapping it into a wall and smacking the proverbial snot out of it. When we rid it of its life we have a little argument with Reed and Bella with Reed wanting to leave us all behind, but who honestly gives a toss, so we head on back. Once back, Cruz gives a pep talk on that. This argument obviously isn't a big deal, but we need to get our big boy pants on and get it done. The next mission is to head to a nearby facility to get a manifest, and whilst there we can also see if there's a way to rid Bella of a nasty beast infection. Two beds with one stone, sure, I'm in. But by completing the mission we also unlock the next achievement, Quoth the Raven. Heading to the facility, absolutely nothing really new happens. It's just fight Xenos and the mechs until we reach something of interest. Now, the first thing of interest is when we enter a cave and meet a new spitter type of Xeno. They're basically just ranged boys, but are much easier to kill. In fact, the first thing that we do is kill five without getting spat on in the slightest and unlock the achievement secreted from what? I told you this game is pretty generous with achievements, for now at least. We eventually find the facility and of course it's broken and ruined and full of enemies to shoot upon and it only takes a couple of minutes for us to reach a terminal to tech for the manifest. They find it and also find that there's a marine member on there as well, meaning that we have to go save them. However, time to save Bella first, hopefully. We head into a lift and the mission ends. When it does, we reach level 20 with our marine and unlock yet another achievement, this time lean and mean. Folks, you know what happens next. We fight our way through waves and waves of enemies, but we find a rather clean and up-to-date medical facility and even a handy doctor inside as well. Unfortunately though, he doesn't give us good news, as even if we do remove the chest burster, it's placenta that will be left inside side Bella is cancerous and will just kill her anyway. Well, Bella is down for the count, and even though the game tries to make this a sad moment, yeah, I didn't really care. Although O'Neill shooting her chest burster in the face was quite nice. Oh well, rip Bella, you will not be missed. Time to save the marine. Luckily, they're in the same facility, so we go to stealth as we try to manoeuvre throughout the level without triggering the alarm. This goes fairly well to be honest, and we expertly clear each room without anybody noticing. But folks, it's been 30 seconds since our last achievement. I think it's time for some more, two to be specific. As when we upgrade the pistol and buy the last one that we can for it, we unlock the achievement Field Modified Kill Certified for upgrading every slot for a weapon, and I can handle myself for buying all upgrades for a weapon. Very easily done. 
Anyway, back to the marine and the stealth. We fight through rooms and rooms of enemies as per usual and getting to the end of the level where we manage to shut down the power to the entire facility making everything go crazy. Also giving us the achievement on making it here without the alarm being raised unlocking no need for alarm. In the next mission we see the damage that turning off the facility's power has done as we find the Queen Xeno and a bunch of mechs still taking eggs from her to research and experiment on. But I'm not going to feel bad for the mechs as the power cuts out, the Queen gets loose and absolutely destroys everything in her path. Sweet, sweet karma. To get to the marine though, we now need to head through a derelict Xeno spacecraft that is pretty well impressively intact. However, we fight on through and on the other side find the marine that was taken hostage. We shoot his captors in the face and rescue this poor bastard. Now here is where we also find a new ship that we could escape the planet with, but when we inform Cruz of that, it's pretty obvious that he already knew. However, the mission ends and we unlock the next achievement still got a job to do. Once back with Cruz and the gang, we unmask the hostage who turns out to be Hicks, the gent that sent the distress message at the start of the game. We have to run as an army of mechs arrive being chased by hundreds of Xenos, so it's time to go. Reed and Hicks get to the new dropship to start to get it ready, whilst the rest of us make our stand. This is where we also find our new type of Xeno as well, the Crusher. Now this thing looks scary as hell, agreed. However, it's probably one of the easiest bosses in any game to face, as even though it's a total bullet sponge, you can dodge its attacks hilariously easily, and just load into it whilst it's recovering. In fact, I blew myself up once which is more damage than this thing has ever caused me, which is proven as once we kill it we unlock our next achievement for killing a crusher without taking damage, unlocking anytime, anywhere. We then find Reed and Hicks on the dropship and all we have to do now is release the fuel pumps and climb on board. Unfortunately though, this is easily the most brain rottingly hard section of the game, as to release the fuel pumps you have to climb these little stairs. Only problem is, once you do so and begin the animation, Xenos will run up those stairs, trap you and shred you to death within seconds. It's honestly hilariously annoying, and I easily spent a good 40 minutes to an hour on this fuel section alone. However, like the absolute pro gamer that I am, we eventually persevere and got the job done. Thankfully, as this part was starting to make my brain itch, though the blow was cushioned as we unlocked the achievement for finishing the level, just a grunt. Hicks then explains how he survived after the message was sent. It turns out he was pulled out of his pod and captured by Wayland PMCs before they were sent into space, and in fact a body was thrown into his pod, so Ripley, Newt and Bishop were all jettisoned, and people thought the fourth person was Hicks when it wasn't and he survived. Now, I've only seen aliens like once or twice many, many years ago, so I don't really care about the retcon, but I also know a lot of people people were pissed off at this move, but for me, I couldn't give less of a sausage. So time to head to the ship that'll send us home. However, unfortunately, we're too late and it takes off without us, even bumping into the Queen again on the path there. With no other options, we get back on our dropship with Reed and throw ourselves into the wall of this ship, making our way through. Unfortunately though, we're not the only ones who made it, it seems, as somehow, and I really cannot fathom how this is possible, the Queen made it on board as well. Now everyone else is free and safe, however Cruz is stuck on the ship and he tells us to scram. We instead say, sod that, we're gonna get you out and now it's time for the fight of our lives. How do we take out this humongous task, you ask? Well, we flip four switches and then get this, flip another switch, and send a cargo load into the Queen's chest, also knocking her off the ship, unlocking us the next achievement, Dragged Queen. Unfortunately, the push doesn't do it though, so Cruz decides it's time to end this, and by this, I mean his life, as he turns the ship back on and drives it into the Queen's chest taking them both to their graves. In the end cutscenes, we also find out that Wayland is on this ship and they go to him for answers, but in typical alien fashion though, Hicks shoots him after realising that it's just a synthetic double. Bishop then downloads everything he knows directly from the broken android, and the game ends with them going back into space saying that they'll have everything they'll need. With this, we also unlock the next three achievements, Game Over Man, Not Bad for a Human, and State of the Badass Art, for completing the game on any difficulty, hardened, and ultimate badass respectively. So with that done, it's now time for some cleanup. Honestly, the cleanup didn't take too long, so let's just blitz through them. First, we went back and collected all 12 audio logs in the game, unlocking I Heard That. After that, we went back to the starting mission where we have to defend the door hacker from the Xenos, only this time we can't let a single Xeno get through our defences. Definitely took a couple of attempts as there was always one sneaky alien that made its way through, but we eventually did it, unlocking short controlled bursts. Next, we also got to over rank 30, and by spending all of the points that we'd earned on weapon upgrades, we unlocked majority shareholder as well. For the next two achievements, I had my lovely 
lovely friend Taylor joined my game so that she could help me with a couple of the co-op achievements. The first was to just have her in my party. When she joined, we unlocked I Feel Safer already, but then we loaded into a game and she got herself down so that when I revived her, I also unlocked Don't Count Me Out. Now, next, throughout the entire campaign, I had found every single special weapon, except for one. So we loaded into the level that it was in again, and when I found that missing weapon, we picked it up and unlocked I Like To Keep These Handy. Now, we're truly getting there, folks. The next we got was for going through the alien robot boxing match again this time finishing it in under 1 minute and 10 seconds. To be honest, we did get lucky here and the raven alien got stuck in animation, so we just pelted her to smeg until dead, unlocking us heavy lifting. Next, we killed three enemies with a single fire grenade. Definitely a struggle, however, I remembered this spot on the level where somebody opens a door and there were like four or five enemies behind it, so we lobbed a grenade and got it to dry heat. Next, since we'd managed to do a bunch of challenges already, we thankfully was able to unlock a bunch of cosmetics for our marine, and when we altered every slot of the marine's appearance, we unlocked you look just like I feel, before we then went back through another campaign and got all of the dog tags that I'd missed. This one took about an hour or two, but we finally did it unlocking Remember the Fallen. Now thankfully we only have two more to go for now, until we have to tackle the very short DLC that has achievements as well. So next we simply killed 2179 Xenomorphs. A little bit grindy, but once you've gone through the campaign you can just replay the smart gun section from earlier and it's a really fast way to get those kills up. So eventually we unlocked Arbitrarily Exterminated, and finally for now we just just completed all of the challenges in one of the three categories. We tackled the campaign sections first, and it's certainly the easiest with the least amount in it. So when we completed the last challenge of this branch, we unlocked Stay Frosty. Christ, that was a lot to go through. However, for now, I thought it was time to tackle the Status Interrupted DLC before tackling the final three achievements. The DLC starts with Hicks talking to Wayland. Wayland wants to know about the events leading up to this moment, with Beck's message to Wayland Utani confirming the Xenomorph's existence and the destruction of Hadley's hope. Bishop then also reveals that he went to go and intercept the Salako, but things didn't go well as the ship they were using to go storm it had a rather sudden outbreak of Xenos. We then spawn in as somebody called Elizabeth, peeling a face hugger off our boat race. And with people cooking nearby, it's time to get out lickety split. But first we need to go and find our family, who should still be in the hibernation pods and then escape before this random man then dies in front of us of course. We make our way throughout the level without a single gun, and we have to sneak our way through all of the death and the destruction that the mechs, the Xenos are leaving. We then need to hop into a locker to survive a Xeno and mech fight. We then get saved by a couple more people that have been trapped on board. Now honestly, not being able to fight was quite awesome, having to tackle this as a normal human being gave it a really nice grounded feeling, where it would feel as I imagine much closer to what would actually happen if I, the player, was there, and not some roided out super soldier apparently. Apparently. I don't know, I just like this change of pace, it was much more tense, and unfortunately the exact second that I was thinking that, that section ended. As we soon find a flamethrower and get back to the classic of cooking Xenos until lovely and golden brown. Now fortunately it doesn't take us long to get to deep sleep and once we enter we find our parents. As you can imagine they're deader than a can of spam, with a lovely mixture of face hugging and bullets that have done the trick. We collapse at the sight of our next achievement unlocked, I only need to know one thing. Elizabeth then decides it's time to blow up the ship, and yeah sod it, why not? We battle our way through more and more fighting Xenos and mechs alike. Also worth saying that I'm once again doing this on the hardest difficulty for another achievement. Now Elizabeth must be an absolute unit because it doesn't take us long to get to the core controls and rig it to detonate. As we work on it, we turned around though and find a collection of rather angry Xenos. But they're not attacking, probably as the chest burster is getting rather close to being born. Oh, right on time. He's a sweet fellow really. I think I'll call him Bob. Moments later, Bob is dismembered, as the entire ship explodes and we unlock the next achievement that you can bill me. Wayland keeps going through this interrogation, saying that the loss of the Lugano was unfortunate since they lost a lot of eggs, but some did apparently escape. We then take control of somebody inside a pod again. Oh, the person is Hicks. Wonderful. The room gets immediately stormed with mechs that we take out, unfortunately interrupting status in the process. Oh, hey, it's the name of the DLC, I get it now. But this section shows that a random man, as I said, was thrown into space instead of Hicks, along with Newton Ripley. We take a moment to get over all of it and get back to kicking ass. First, we need to gear up at the security station. On the way, we also see the other side of the conversation, where Elizabeth goes to blow the legato up. So now on the other side of the ship, we need to break the tether to that one so that we don't go down with it. So we sprint to the control room and hop on one of the big guns to blow the bridge manually. It only takes a couple of shots and is dead simple, but by clearing it without missing a shot, we unlock the next achievement I don't got all day, which was stupidly easy. Oh well. Now with the legato blown up, it's time to escape the ship as well to go and chase after Ripley and Newt. On the way to do so, we also unlock yet another achievement, surprisingly, by killing all of the lurking Xenos in Solarco's engineering, and unlocked the dead okay, can we go? 
My lord, some of the achievement names in this game are incredibly long. Oh well, I like that the names have been thought out, unlike some games. However, we hop onto a ship in the cargo bay and fly straight out of the Salako to go and try and find Ripley. As soon as we land on a planet nearby, we are then shown a snippet of Alien 3 where Ripley does the Olympic dive off the railing. Hicks has another moment before Max then capture us. Now back in the present with Wayland, he's interrogating Hicks and Stone for the access code to the message that Hicks wants to send to the Colonial Marine Corps, but Wayland gets stabbed in the back by one of the doctors. Hicks gets untied and they both go to reach and uplink that so that Hicks can send that message. It's more of the same of course, blasting through as many humans as the game decides to send our way. We blow the hatch to the ship we're in and go to make our great escape, unlocking the next achievement. Now what are we supposed to do? Well, it's time to head to the communications relay tower. However, on the way we accidentally stumble into another cave system and inside of course another Xeno lair. Now this is where we also find out that there is in fact a second alien queen as she goes to cut our mission short. However thanks to some quick thinking and running we escape in the nick of time, also unlocking us the achievement we are leaving. We finally make it to the array and notice an insane amount of research Xenos and eggs, so I don't really want to linger here too long. Now honestly folks there is bugger all to really say here, there are some things that we have to do to make it feather throughout the ship but nothing too special other than unlocking our next achievement for collecting all of the audio logs in the DLC unlocking us we're still coming. But other than that, we make it to the communications control and set up a defence so that the message can be uploaded and then sent out. Now this part was kind of annoying as again it seems that you could just die in seconds from a random alien ripping you to shreds. However once again, we push through and the message uploads. Once we're done we fight through the ship further to make it to the station control so that we can hit send on that lovely message. Now unfortunately when we do hit send the full message isn't sent, but hopefully enough of it was. A cutscene then plays of Xenos getting wiped out by an army of mechs and we also see that the queen has been captured and god knows what's going to happen to her. But with that, that's the DLC complete and we unlock the next achievement, thank you, that'll be all and I'm happy to disappoint you for completing the campaign and doing it on Ultimate Badass again. With that done folks, we just have one DLC achievement to go back for until we can finally hit the three last ones and revive the dead servers. In the room with all of the eggs and the face huggers, we just have to break all of the tanks and kill them all. Simple in premise, but some of them are sneaky hiding bastards. So once we slow down and go through each room thoroughly, we kill the last tank and unlock it's the only way to be sure. Now for the last three achievements, all we have to do is complete all of the challenges, upgrade every slot on our Xeno class and reach rank 60 as a marine. It's time for the multiplayer. Now honestly, I am absolutely amazed that the servers are online for this game still. It's honestly crazy to me and I was very much expecting to have to ignore these achievements. However, to my surprise, everything is up and running, except one problem of course, the servers are absolutely dead. So this is where you wonderful lot and my Twitch chat came to help, and this is probably the coolest thing that I have ever been able to do with a YouTube channel. I asked for your help in joining me online to get these challenges done, and like absolute champions you folks answered that call for help, and we had multiple full lobbies all playing and relaxing on Aliens Colonial Marines. I bet the devs saw the jump and just shat themselves. But we got our full lobby and headed into multiplayer, which honestly, I can't lie, was a ton of fun. Cutting around as aliens and ripping people apart, or as a marine being able to handle your own against an army of Xenos was just honestly fantastic. Now unfortunately I'm not going to be talking too much about what happened here because we just grinded challenges, there's nothing really to explain. So instead have a couple of highlights from the 6 hours that we reignited the servers with. Surprise motherfucker! <laughs> okay, I got humbled quite quick there didn't I? You two, no shooty the boiler. <laughs> Fucking no hesitation. It seems like a real popular pl <laughs> Le is this leap alien? What is this? <laughs> Even aliens have fun games. But throughout this, we thankfully were tanking all of the multiplayer challenges that we needed. Pretty damn well too. And we also got our Xeno leveled up enough to be able to buy an ability in every slot. When we did, we unlocked Perfect Killing Machine. Only two left now. However, after the end of this six hour session, we thankfully had unlocked every single multiplayer challenge. 
So now it's just time to finish a couple of other challenges and boost my marine to level 60 and we're done. So massive thanks again to all of the amazing people that joined and helped me grind this. This video wouldn't be possible without you all. So with only a few challenges left we loaded into the campaign and just got kills with certain guns. Eventually after an hour or two we completed the final challenge on every category and unlocked the achievement distinguished service medal. And honestly it felt fantastic to unlock. But with that we only had to grind a couple more levels and a couple more hours until our marine was level 60 and one of the supposed worst games ever made has been grinded. Now the easiest way to grind my level was to play the last mission on the hardest difficulty and just complete it a bunch of times. Since the mission only really takes like 5 minutes to do and you get nearly 4000 XP at the end of it, this without question is the easiest method. So we loaded into the level and got to work, slowly but surely grinding our way through. Now I'm not gonna lie, this part sucked and it was incredibly boring and grindy, and also really sent the message that this final mission sucks and is a terrible way to end the campaign, as pulling five switches does not a mission make. But feck it, after about two hours of replaying this level we finally reached level 60 and unlocked the final achievement I love the core. And with that we are done and without question I would say that this grind is the most special to me. Given what we had to do to complete it and you know I've just 100%ed one of the worst games ever made and I was feeling great about it. Well is it one of the worst games ever made? Time to figure it out as the grind for now is over. So Aliens Colonial Marines, the most important question is how was the grind in the game? And I'm not sure if some of you are going to be disappointed when I say that the game was fine. Nothing better than that of course, but it was fine and I dare say even fun in some sections. Now I know a lot of the pain of this game was caused by fake promises from the dev side showing us one thing and then giving us another, and I can't lie if I was aware of this game when it came out or at all interested in it I probably would have been pretty mad myself, cause the story is very lacklustre, the voice acting is a joke and it kinda does look like a PS2 game, but they're pretty much my only complaints. The gameplay was reasonably fun and chill and I didn't get any game breaking bugs or AI problems, like at all. So I don't believe I saw many of the reasons that this this game was hated and I'm actually quite thankful for that. I always like to give the games I play an open mind no matter the general consensus or even my personal beliefs that I have. I mean I used to hate Dishonored and now it's one of my absolute favourite series of all time because I just gave it an open mind and went through it. And honestly the achievements demanded a little and some of them without help will be impossible but for my experience and journey throughout it, it honestly isn't anywhere near close to the worst game that I've ever played. Just switch your mind off and have fun shooting aliens. If you delve into it anymore there are plenty of things that you're not going to like or wish that were done better, but honestly, I had fun with this game, a lot more than I was expecting. So hey, maybe it's time to give this game another chance. I don't blame you if you don't, but for a running gunning alien action game, it's pretty chill. However, let's move on to the stats. For Aliens Colonial Marines it took us just over 32 hours to grind all 60 achievements. For the rating of the game I'm going to be giving it a 5 out of 10. As I said, it was fine. It wasn't bad but it wasn't the most amazing either. With some fun aspects and some room for improvement I think it's fair just to give this game a straight 5 bang in the middle. For the difficulty of the achievements though I'm pretty conflicted as it all depends if you have enough people to help you make a lobby. Because if you do, it's a 5 out of 10. Collectibles, challenges and the grinding of some of the achievements make this tricky but it is more than doable. However if you want to go for the 100% solo, you can't, it's impossible. So I honestly don't know how I should rate this. Personally, let's just say 5 out of 10 and hope you understand my dilemma. But folks, that's it. Turns out it isn't the worst game ever made anymore, but maybe we should play some other terrible games and try to find which one is. But that's talk for another day. For now though, make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell as next week we're off to the wastelands. Many, many, many people have been asking for the Fallout franchise and I am so happy to say that it officially begins next Sunday with Fallout 3. Fallout 3 and New Vegas are two of my my favourite games ever made, but I've never 100%ed them, so it's time to see how that journey goes next Sunday. And also folks, whilst we're at it, don't forget to swing by my Twitch as well, where we're live 4 days a week and grinding all of the best and worst games that you can think of, so come join us, it would be lovely to have you. And also again I need to give a massive shout out to all of my patrons. You lot are incredible and I really appreciate the support more than you know. Special thanks as well go to Ash Thomas, Cash, Henry, Inductive Gaming, Sean the Sheep, Loki Mischief, Tyro Flack Ripper, Marental, Pickprins, Ajaffa Boyo, Cobble, Luna Get Good, Desti, Danny Doug and Lyder. You are all the absolute dog's bollocks. But that's enough from me today folks. I really hope you enjoyed this interesting chapter in the achievement grind and I cannot wait to see you again. So take care folks. Bye bye for now.